Bar. A lot of you know Frank's Pizza Express, who used to be down on Halstead. They'd like to remind you that they have a variety of pizza, both thick, thin, pan, and their new stuffed pizza. And they do even deliver poppers on all their food orders, if you'd like that. <laughs> or if you want to stop by and pick something up, you can do that. So we'd like to thank... A lot of you know Frank's Pizza Express, who used to be down on Halstead. They'd like to remind you that they have a variety of pizza, both thick, thin, pan, and their new stuffed pizza. And they do even deliver poppers on all their food orders, if you'd like that. <laughs> or if you want to stop by and pick something up, you can do that. So we'd like to thank Frank. Uh, tonight they're giving away a $10 bar tab from the Gold Coast, and you can find Frank's Pizza Express Pizza down at the Gold Coast on Tuesday nights, which is Leather Night at the Gold Coast. So you can go down with your bar tab and have a few drinks and have some pizza. So if you check your tickets for the last three numbers, we'll give away this bar tab for the Gold Coast. The man, our person that's holding ticket ending in 159. 159. We got a winner right away. Okay, um, our second uh, commercial tonight is a little bit different, something we didn't expect we'd get when we started this whole thing, and that's like a paid political announcement. This is sponsored by The Toolbox and IO Chicago. I'd like to introduce Robert Burns, who's running for the appellate court in the Democratic primary. Uh, hello, everybody. Hello, family. Um, I'm a teacher at DePaul University, and I'm on the ballot for the uh, Democratic primary for the appellate court. My opponents are three uh, judges and uh, the ex-mayor, Snowbody Belandic. Uh, the ballot location is right underneath the sanitation district, so now you know why there's so many gray lords. I think, uh, I think most of us are pretty fed up with uh, politics, patronage, and uh, ward favors as the criterion for judgeship. And um, I'd like your support in the primary. My uh, ballot number is 185. I think you'd have a, might be a first in this country, a friend on the appellate court. Thanks for your support. It's the first time I've ever heard of anybody running to be a judge in Chicago to come to a gay group and ask for your support. Okay, uh, the sponsors of this ad, The Toolbox, would uh, like to give away a door prize. Uh, this is a membership in their video club and uh, a first free rental, or if you're not into the movie scene, they do have a lot of merchandise, you can uh, trade it in for some merchandise. If you wanna check your tickets, the last three numbers of 218, 218 for a gift from The Toolbox. You should still be relatively sober and able to read your numbers okay. 218, do we have a winner? Ah. Right? It took Dan to tell me that that was my number. Ah. Well, I <laughs> guess you. I shouldn't have said everybody was sober. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. We'll have more prizes to give away later on, a few more commercial announcements. Again, we'd like to remind you of a couple of things in the games. We ask that you do not call out any answers during the play. Let the players think of the answers themselves. Otherwise, we may have to throw out a question and it delays the game. But feel free to cheer on your team as much as you like to. If Molly is around, I don't see you. Molly, we're ready to get the first game started. Can we have, well, she's over in the corner, okay. Um, our first game tonight is between the Gold Coast and the Closet. All right, good evening everybody. Welcome to Family Feud. First off, let's have the team up from, who's, who's first listed here? Okay, first team listed is Gold Coast. Gold Coast team up here on this side, please. Over 
Gold Coast is playing, is representing the Chicago Gay and Lesbian Community Band and playing for the Gerber Hart Library. Let's welcome the team from the closet. Okay, I have an updated uh, list of the standings here. The Gold Coast is presently leading all 10 teams with a score of 563 points. And Closet at this moment is in, let's see, sixth place with 289 points. So you got some catching up to do, Closet. Okay, I'm going over first and meet the gentleman from the Gold Coast, Mr. Jim Dore, captain over here. You want to introduce your team? Uh, to my left is Paul, our musical programmer. Popular bartender Gary is to his left. John and our alternate Gino. He is our alternate Gino. The regular Gino will not be here tonight. Okay, Linda, darling. Hi, dear. How are you? How are you? Just fine. Want to introduce the rest of your team? Oh, I certainly will. This is Judy to my right. She's one of the owners of the closet. This is Debbie, Linda, and Mercy. Team from the closet. Okay, captains. Oh, thank you. This is, this is a present from the Gold Coast, a Wendy's competitive meat detector. It's in a hotel on LaSalle Street. I left him there. Uh, let's see. If circumstances beyond your control ever find you in a hamburger place other than Wendy's, this advanced space-age precision instrument can be of great value. Carefully remove the upper fluffy bun portion of your hamburger, then without disturbing any of the interior ingredients, use this instrument to assist you in positively locating and identifying the meat. And it has a magnifying glass about the size of a dime. <laughs> it works. It works. Thank you. Okay, captains, come on, start the game. Give it a push. Give it a push. Let's see if it's working. Okay. Okay. We we'll ask you again, please, to uh, make things fair for everybody. Try not to call out answers, okay? You can do that all night long. I don't care. Okay, this is question number 103. We asked 100 people at Carol Speakeasy the following question. Their top seven answers are up on the board. And we ask you to name their most popular answer. Besides Dynasty, name another primetime soap opera. Gary, uh, Jimmy. Dallas. Dallas, is it up there? Number one answer. Okay, you have the choice now, okay? Gonna play it? Okay. Paul, besides Dynasty, name another primetime soap. Uh, daytime or nighttime? Primetime. Primetime. Um, Five seconds. Uh, <laughs> I can't think. Okay, that's strike one. I don't watch TV. Gary? <laughs> Uh, besides Dynasty, name another primetime soap? Falcon Crest. Falcon Crest! Good answer! Second answer, okay. 48, 58, 66 points up there. Got five answers left and one strike. John, name another, name another primetime soap besides Dynasty. Knott's Landing. Knott's Landing! Knott's Landing is up there, 56, 62. Gino Darling. Besides Dynasty, another primetime soap. Hotel. Hotel! There it is. 72, we got three answers. I don't know, there were that many of them on there. Okay, Jimmy. There's seven. Uh, all the, from now on, they change it. There's no numbers, just the, the red ones and the black ones are blanks. There's th three more answers. Uh, yellow Rose of Texas. The Yellow Rose! There it is. Okay, what is that now? 16. 34, 74, 82, 84, and two answers left. Paul? <laughs> Family feud. <laughs> 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 
Jerry Lewis here, just to remind you folks that thanks to your contributions, people like Paul can be helped. I'm reaching for the strike while I'm calling out Family Feud. Oh, you got, oh, he already has two. Okay. All right, the pressure's on. They can steal it if you don't get a right answer. There's two answers left. Name another primetime soap besides Dynasty. Uh, Emerald Point. Emerald Point! That's the third strike. Okay, there are 84 points at stake. Closet? Got an answer, Closet? Come on, Lynn, I need an answer. <laughs> we live during the day, so our prime time is daytime. We'd say, all my children. It's a soap, is it up there? All my children? Oh, it isn't. Okay, 48, 66, 76, 84 points for Gold Coast, I got a point. I got a 10. What's number five? I'm taking my nap. Soap, oh my God. And number seven? Three's Company. 84. Bulletproof. <laughs> okay, let's have excuse me. Judy, Paul, come on up. We're gonna have some more commercials, some more drawings. Don't forget next week Dynasty will be back, so we will have Dynasty at eight o'clock. Hope those of you who were early enough enjoyed Tootsie. We had Tootsie this evening. We showed. Hoffman. They have revamp. Oh, we're gonna have five answers this time. All right, there's there's one change. There are no numbers on the things. Just the red ones are the right are the answers, and the blank black ones are blanks now. So this time we're gonna have five, and I need an envelope. Don't forget, please tell your friends if you enjoy yourself. Come next week. The more people we get, the more money we raise. Thank you, Carl. This is question 141. We asked 100 people at Big Reds the following question. Their top five answers are on the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. Shh. Name a gay bar other than Big Reds that is frequented by women. <laughs> Paul? Closet. How about the closet? <laughs> Number one answer. Lost the battle, but won the war. They'll talk to you later. <laughs> you got to play it? Yeah. Okay. There's all these studs in there. Gary, name a gay bar other than Big Reds, which is frequented by women. CK Augies. Augie and CKs. All right, 24 and 28 is 52. There's uh, three answers left. Right, okay. John, name a gay bar other than Big Reds, frequented by women. The baton. The baton? Yeah. That's a strike. Okay, that's one. Many ladies, but, certain, but not that many women. Okay. Gino, a gay bar other than Big Reds, which is frequented by women. Lost and found. Lost and found! You're kidding. Surprised me. Two strikes. Okay, James. You got to get... Uh, we need three more answers, otherwise the closet people get a chance to steal this question. There's 52 points at Big Reds, and they said name a gay bar other than Big Reds that is frequented by women. Paradise. How about the paradise? All right. Okay, you need to get this answer so they don't get a big lead. Yeah. You got one? Really? Swan Club. How about the Swan Club? <laughs> now, I thought we were talking to experts over here. Oh, what's the third answer? Where do they go? Come on, the ladybug. Four? 905? That's defunct, isn't it? It's not even open anymore. What's number five? Oh, Norma's, yeah. Okay. His and hers wasn't up there, I'm surprised. Okay, 52 and 84 is 136. 
Nothing closet. You know where we hang out. Really? <laughs> uh, Debbie. Debbie? Gary, come on. Remember, tonight's show is being videotaped, and uh, we're going to make a deal. If, uh, if you'd like a copy to see Family Feud, uh, if we can make some copies, and uh, proceeds will be donated to the pot that we have. Okay? Okay. Not touching that with a pitchfork. We asked, question number 136. We asked 100 people at the Paradise this following question, their top seven answers are on the board. Name their most popular answer to this. How many times in one month do you go dancing? It's good at pounding things. Yes? 10. 10 times a month. Ten is up there. If you can get uh, one of the three better answers, you can steal a question. How many times in one month do you go dancing? Twenty. Twenty times. The real disco bug. Twenty? Twenty wasn't up there. My feet are killing me. You gonna play this one? They're gonna pass it. Okay, you got the question anyway. We're coming down to... Linda? How many times in one month do you go dancing? We ask people at Paradise now. It's the disco club, remember that. Eight. Eight, how about eight? It's up there. All right. Six answers left. Could you pull that back just a little bit more, honey? Okay, there's 10, 15, 25 points up there. Mercy, how many times a month do you go dancing? Uh, four. Four, how about four? Once a week, all right. Number one answer, there's 43 points. Okay, Linda, you gotta keep, these, keep this question to stay in the game. How many times in one month do you go dancing? Twice. Twice a month, anybody twice? Twice, second best answer. Okay, 30, 48, 58, we got three answers left. Judy, we asked people at Paradise, how many times in one month do you go dancing? Five. How about five? I think it is. All right. 68. Deb, there's two answers. You can be a hero. You have no strikes yet. How many times in one month do you go dancing? Six. Six? How about six? That was either a wrong answer or a man in the back has gas. Okay. We have a strike. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Linda, got another answer. How many times in one month? I think some people go once. Just once a month. There it is. Okay. Mercy, their strategy was to try and have you make all the mistakes. You can uh, make it backfire and get all the points. Get one more answer. How many times in one month? Let's say three. How about three? That's it, they got them all. Okay, 45, hold on, hold on just a second. Oh, that's 100 points, all right. Okay, that's right. Okay, 100 over here, 136, of, 100 for closet, excuse me, 136 Gold Coast. And uh, John and Linda, okay, come on up. Thank you, honey. Don't forget, we're going to have a... <laughs> they all like to play. Yeah. <laughs> no, it goes like this. It's all right. Why is it going on? <laughs> Not either one of them going. Hold it. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> we're practicing. <laughs> Go on. Yeah. It went on? Okay. I don't touch it until it's your turn. <laughs> Paul in the block, okay? Yes, I know we're having a sale, so. 
the $35 special at the flight. It's getting late, okay? Okay, we're gonna do six answers this time, and I need a question. question. Yes, don't forget next week we will be here one more time, and then hopefully maybe we'll do some special events. We've been talking, possibly doing another game like Hollywood Squares or something like that. The dating game, oh God. The Love Connection, have you seen that one? Good Isn't that great, that show? They get two people on, the, the, the audience gets nothing for picking their date, and then they get out there and the, the guy says, yeah, I'll go out with her again. The girl says, no, thanks. <laughs> it's just wonderful. Rejection in front of 10 million people, it's wonderful. Okay, now remember where this, remember this helps if you, where the question was asked, like that was a paradise at the disco club, so you generally will get higher answers to that question. Question number 122. We asked 100 people at Club Victoria the following question. Their top six answers around the board named their most popular answer to this question. If you could be a female entertainer, who would you want to be? Oh boy. Diana Ross. The boss, Miss Ross. Man. You play them? Now we're gonna find out how butch these guys really are, okay? Diana Ross. Are you gonna play this one? Yes. Oh. Okay, we should breeze through this in about 10 seconds. Okay. Chino, if you could be a female entertainer, and who says you're not, who would you want to be? I gotta say, uh, Bette Midler. How about Bette Midler? The divine one. Okay, 40 points and four answers. You guys can win it if you get all the answers. They can win it too. If you could be a female entertainer, who would you want to be? Barbara Streisand. Babs! I'm surprised. I asked my hairdresser to give me the Barbara Streisand look. She broke my nose with a comb. Okay. If you could be a female entertainer, who would you want to be? Liza Minnelli. Liza with a Z. That's a, that's a strike. Okay. Okay, one strike left. Gary, if you could be a female entertainer, there are 40 points up there. If you could be a female entertainer, who would you want to be? Shh, shh, please. Betty Davis. Bet Davis! There it is. Okay, 53. Sean, you had a real quick answer, number one answer. There's three left. Can you give me another one? Marilyn Monroe. M. Monroe! That's a strike. Okay, girls. Let's see, is there enough? 40, 53? That's not enough for them to win, but you can take the lead back. Okay, Linda, if you could be a female entertainer, who would you want to be? Judy Garland. Judy Garland! That was a strike? That was a strike. Okay, you get the 53, so that's 189. What's the second best answer? Myself. Do you girls all take this question or what, huh? <laughs> Number three. Pat Benatar. And number four. Uh, number five, rather. Five, fifth best answer. Mae West. She used to be Snow White, but she drifted. Okay, 189 for Gold Coast. 100 for Closet. Uh, both teams can win on this. Let's see. Mercy, Gino, come on up. Okay, we're getting down to the tense part. Both teams can win on this one. You have to sweep the question, and you guys just have to win the question. If there's somebody in the audience with a kind heart that could ask a bartender to get your mama here a cocktail, I'd be real happy. Yes, they're working, aren't they? I'm not gonna try that every time. Okay, here comes David Boyer. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mercy. Question 125. Okay, question 125. We asked 100 people at Dignity the following question. <laughs> their top six answers are on the board, name their most popular answer. How many courses are served at an impressive dinner? Yeah. 
Time out. You broke my button. Percy. Seven. Seven course dinner? Yay! And one answer. You gonna play it? Five more answers. Okay. Immersive. Okay. Linda, how many courses are served at an impressive dinner? Five. A five course dinner. All right. Second best answer, 77. Let's see, there's the, let's see, there's the macaroni and cheese and uh, the jello, that's two, okay. How many courses? Twelve. Twelve courses, 17 days for dinner. That was the strike, okay. I go to your house. I don't know, when I serve dinner there's 12 courses, you know, six different kinds of potatoes alone. I fry everything, even the jello. Okay, Deb. I'd say six. Six course? Six. Oh, thank you. Uh, surprise, I thought that'd be up there. Uh, that's our second strike, too. Okay, it's getting tense now. Linda, you gotta get a right answer, otherwise they can win the game here. You have uh, 77 points up there. How many courses? I'd say four. A four-course meal, what does it sound like? Four is up there, okay, 81 points. Mercy gave us the best answer, can you find another one? Three. Soup, salad, and a main course, three? Oh, I'm surprised. Well, this is a double cheeseburger, french fries, and a Coke. All right, there's 81 points and more than enough for you guys to win and take a big lead again. What do you say? Nine. A nine course dinner. A nine. <laughs> it's up there. Okay. 189 and 81 is 192. 70. Closet, you still have an extra 100 points. Congratulations, Gold Coast. Thank you, Closet. We'll see you both again next week. Okay. All right, I think we're going to have a commercial. Get out your tickets, please. We're going to have a drawing as well. No, it's, it's still working. <laughs> While I... Uh, will the teams from Piggins and Carol's please step over to this side? They'll be next. David, are we having commercial? Okay, let's bring out a tireless man who works awful hard for all of us, Mr. David Boyer. Give me a second to get organized here. Our first commercial sponsor for this uh, little break here is from Take One, and I'd like to introduce Dijon. If you would like to come on up here and tell us about Take One. Good evening, everyone. I'm Dejan. I'm the new slut in town. Um, I wanted to inform you that Tuesday night at Take One is our cheap night. All well drinks are a dollar, beer is 75 cents, and all the liquor is cheap. I am too, but I charge more. Hi, Sophie. <laughs> Wednesday night is Dynasty Night. We show Dynasty on our six foot by eight foot screen. We have the best projection in town. We are a video bar. And uh, we have champagne and martinis for 50 cents a glass. I want to invite you all down, and we have a $10 bar tab for a door prize tonight. Thank you. Okay, we got a $10 bar tab from Take One. If you check your tickets, the last three numbers of 197. 197 for a $10 bar tab from Take One. One more chance, number 197. Okay, we'll try again with a different number. 
Ticket number 181. Does somebody have a ticket ending in numbers 181? Look at your tickets. Last three numbers. 181. All right. We got it? Okay, our second commercial sponsor for tonight at this spot was with us last week. That's Imperial Towers European Tan Spa. They're on the second floor of the North Tower at Mar on Marine Drive, 4250. They're open seven days a week. And they, they let you know that appointments are necessary. They have a special offer going on right now. Uh, we do have uh, little cards out by the front door as you came in. And what it is, there's a discount. I'm going to read this here now. On your first half hour session, it's a half price of $550. Or if you do seven half hour sessions, you get 30% off at $50 instead of the regular price of $70. We also have a complimentary tan session at the, the spa, so if you want to check your numbers and get a head start on your uh, tan for the summer, although it's almost time to go out to the beach. Last three digits of 176. 176. Do we have a winner here? Okay, thank you very much. We have uh, more commercials and more prizes to give away later on. Again, we'd like to remind you to thank all of our sponsors when you do get out and shop around and uh, thank them for helping us out and uh, also to thank the businesses that have sponsored teams and have brought their employees and their, their customers down here to party. We really appreciate all that. Make sure you let them know that as well. Let's get on with our next game. Molly? Oh, stop, you'll turn my pretty head. Okay, we're ready for game number two. Let's see who's listed first. All right, first over here, the team from Piggins. Piggins Pub. And, oh, here they are, okay. Piggins Pub is playing on behalf of Dignity Gay Catholics and playing on behalf of the National Coalition of Black Gays, Carol Speakeasy, the team from Carol Speakeasy, come on up. All my children. Oh, you're a good group. All right. This is Captain Roxanne, the team Piggins. How are you tonight, Roxanne? Would you like to introduce the rest of your team? Sure. Uh, this is Chocolate Chip. This is Patty, Brian, and Billy. All right, the team from Piggins. Brenda. Captain, don't want to smudge her makeup, God forbid. Took three days and two rollers of paint. This is Captain Brenda Starr. Thought somebody was sticking a knife in her back. It was just a star. Captain, how are you? Uh, hi, I'm, oh, fine. <laughs> this is ex-captain of the team, Brenda Starr. Captain Allen. Would you like to introduce your team and keep your job? <laughs> this is Allen. This is Herbert. This is Rabbit. And that's Michael on the end. Okay, the team from Carol Speakeasy. At the present moment, Let's see, Piggins has, is in eighth place with 249. Carol's right ahead of them with 261 in seventh place. So you both got some catching up to do. Captain Roxanne, Captain Brenda, come on up here. And let's play. Thank you. I want you to get a load of this outfit. Is this something you're on? She looks like Annie in Quaaludes, you know? All right. I saw, I saw her last Friday night. She was really lovely. She's putting her makeup on. Is my lipstick on? Okay. 
Question number four. We asked 100 men at Touche the following question. Their top five answers are up on the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. How many articles of leather do you own? Okay, Roxanne. Five. Five pieces. That's a strike. Brenda, can you give them a right answer? You automatically get the question. Three. Three? Number one answer. Okay. Do this first. You gonna play it? Okay. Alan? How many articles of leather? We asked it touche. How many articles of leather do you own? Four. Four. Second best answer. Okay, there's 50 points up there. Regina, darling. This is not really her, but this is Regina. Regina runs the popper store over here at Carol's. Please stop in and see her some night. She'll show you her pierced earrings and other rings. Regina, how many articles of leather do you own? Five. I thought she was going to say 173. <laughs> Five? Oh. Isn't that their answer over there? Okay, one strike. Okay. Gary, how many articles of leather do you own? We asked a touche. Two. Two! Hmm. Okay. What's up there now? We have two strikes, 50 points. Michael, how many articles of leather do you own? Twelve. Twelve? I don't think that outside of Fredericks of Hollywood there are 12 pieces of articles of leather. I don't know, but... Okay, Roxanne, you can win the question at 50 points. Get off to the lead. What do you say? One. One! Okay, they got the points. 50 points. Roxanne, here's your marking pen. 50 points for Piggins. Carol's? On a, on, there's nothing. Let's see, what's the uh, third answer? <sighs> Ten. <laughs> that includes shackles, I think. That's four. And uh, what's the fifth best answer? None. There were six people who lied at Touche's that they have no leather articles of clothing. Okay. Christ, I even got a belt. Okay, the score is 50 to nothing in favor of Piggins. We're going to have another question in a second. Alan? Chocolate? Come on up here. Don't forget, coming up in March, uh, we do this every year. It's a benefit for AIDS, Chicago Molly's Rock and Roll Revival Show. It's always a lot of fun. We do some of the oldie music from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. We'd love to see you here. And as, uh, as I say, it's a benefit for AIDS. There'll be more details forthcoming in the papers. Question 143. We asked this question at Bush's to 100 people. And their top six answers are on the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. On an average night, how many drinks do you buy for someone else? Alan. Three. Three drinks. Okay, it's up there. Fourth best answer. Chalk, what do you say? Two. Two? Best answer. 39, you gonna play this? You gonna play it? Okay. Patty. On an average night, how many drinks do you buy for someone else? None. The old no drinks. I didn't think 20 people would admit to that. Brian. On an average night, how many drinks do you buy for someone else? One. One drink. Okay, piling up the points here. 20, 40, 64, 79. Two answers and no strikes. Billy, on an average night, how many drinks? Eight. All right, that's more my speed. Eight? Okay, that was a strike. I don't know, it works out to that way for me. I, I don't know, I'm giving up my method of finding men. I'm so tired of sitting next to the same guy for three hours going, please. Okay. <laughs> Roxanne, one strike. On an average night, how many drinks do you buy for someone else? Four. Four drinks. Okay. 64, 79, 88. 
could take a big lead if you get the right answer here. How many cocktails do you buy for somebody else? Five. Give me five drinks. All right, they swept the question. 24, 64, 89. It's 100? Thank you. That's right. Okay, 150 over here for Piggins. Come on, Carols. Nothing over here. They won their first, first week and they've been in a slump ever since. Okay, Patty, come on up here. Regina. But you don't have to you don't have to smack these things. Just tap them. It'll go on. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> question 133. We asked 100 people at the Marigold Bowl the following question. The top six answers are on the board, and their most popular answer to this question. Name a restaurant that caters to gays and lesbians. Regina. Medina. The Medina. You're kidding. Patty? Other brother. The other brother? Okay, they got the question. You gonna play it? All right. Let's see. Ryan. Name a restaurant that caters to gays and les lesbians. Melrose? Melrose Restaurant. Eight points. <sighs> Otherwise known as Tomain Towers. Okay, Billy, I'll take this back from you. Okay. Name me. <laughs> Melrose Restaurant is the only place I know where you pray after and before you eat. I mean, I don't know. Should meatloaf glow in the dark? Is that... <laughs> Last... <laughs> Last summer, the flies took up a collection to fix the screen door in the back, you know. <laughs> they don't have to worry about roaches. I'm on a roll now. They don't have to worry about roaches. They put dental floss in the kitchen and they hang themselves. Okay. <laughs> I'm out of bad restaurant jokes, okay? <laughs> Name a restaurant that caters to gays and lesbians. Two Doors South. Two Doors South. <laughs> Best answer, top answer. And a lovely restaurant it is, too. 37, 55, 63, three answers. Roxanne, you could win it if you get the next three answers. Name a restaurant that caters to gays and lesbians. Gentry's. How about Gentry? Okay, that's strike number one. Okay, Chuck, what do you say? Name a restaurant that caters to gays and lesbians. House of Pancakes. The IHOP, famous for their veal parmesan. Oh my. Okay, two strikes. You guys, we're rolling there. All right, there's uh, 63 points at stake, Patty. Name a restaurant that caters to gay and lesbians. Oak Tree. The Oak Tree. Sounds good to me. Home of the $73 bacon and egg breakfast. Okay. Okay. 63 points you get on the board, Carol's. What do you say? Dion's. Dion's Pizza. 63 points, 213. Piggins, you win. The final score, 213 Piggins. Nothing for Carol's. Let's see the other three answers. What's the second best? My brother's place. Uh, fifth answer, fourth answer, rather. Genesee Depot. And sixth answer. And Sather's, yeah. Okay, congratulations to Piggins with 213. You're all fired. Good night. <laughs> okay, Carol's, we'll see you all next week. Thank you all. Good night. All right, I have to take a short break to go to the facilities, and we're going to have a drawing, get your tickets out again, and then we'll have another game. Tell your friends. For those of you who are new and haven't been here the last two weeks, I'd like to explain uh, the way we raise money. All the money's collected at the door, without exception. Every bit of that money goes into the prize pot, as well as the money that is paid out by sponsors to have these commercials, as well as a 15% uh, donation off the 
cash register ring up by Carol Speakeasy, goes into a pot, a prize pot. Now at the end of the, at the, end of the four weeks, we're gonna add all the team's points up. So even if they lose, it's important for them to get as many points as they can because their points are added up. The team with the highest percentage of the points scored gets that percentage of the money out of 100% and so on all the way down the line. Everybody's gonna get some money though. Okay, let's bring up the next teams for game number three. Playing for the Chicago Gay Men's Chorus, let's welcome the team from the Bushes. Bushes! <laughs> what, the bus just let out now or what? Uh, wait a minute now. This is correct, David? This is the right way? See, we had a little scheduling difficulty because we don't want the teams to play each other more than once, and they had a schedule where the, t the two teams would play teams that they had already played against. Is this correct? I have Bushes and Lou family. Is that right? Okay, Bushes. All right, you fellas are over here. Where's your fifth man? Oh, here he comes. And playing for the Gay Lesbian Pride Week Planning Committee, the Lou family from North Clark Street. Okay, Bushes. Captain, introduce us. Hi, how are you? Uh, this is one of our bartenders, Fred. We have Chuck from Two Doors South, another bartender, Frank, and another bartender, Mark. Fred, Chuck, Frank, and Mark, and uh, Joe. Joe. Captain Joe, Fred, Chuck, Frank, and Mark. Next week, I swear I'm going to bring out Hello, I Am tags. <laughs> Captain Waynette. Oh, my God. <laughs> Waynette Lou. Lou. Waynette Lou. Oh, Waynette Lou. Lou. Excuse me. Thank you. Would you like to introduce your team? Okay, from Inner Circle, I have my grandmother here. This is Renee Lou, great aunt Sylvie Lou. Yeah. <laughs> and from Take One, I have Dijon Lou, and I had to bring my boss or I couldn't be here, so I have Sam Lou. <laughs> the Lou family. Okay, let's get this game on the road. I, I'd like to, uh, while they're bringing out the question, I have the standings and your scores at the moment. Somewhere here. What do they do with my score sheet? Oh boy, we're having fun. They stole my score sheet. I had the standings. Okay, thank you. Yeah, the Lou family I know is in fourth place, but I don't know where uh, Bush's is. You've won both your games, I know. Okay. Question number 124, we asked 100 people at a dignity meeting the following question. If you could be a famous pope, which, no, I'm just kidding. Wait. Till... Okay. Okay. We asked 100 people at dignity the following question. Their top eight answers are on the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. What gay bar has the cleanest restrooms? Big Reds. Big Reds. <laughs> I like the... Is that a strike? Yeah. Okay, that was a strike. Joe, no, come here. Come here. You can, uh, they gave a wrong answer. <laughs> uh, bushes. How about Bushes? Okay, it's up there. Uh, they already had a wrong, so you get it automatically. You want to play it? Going to play it? Okay. Freddie, what gay bar has the cleanest restrooms? Um, closet. How about the closet? Okay, that's strike number one. There's nine points up there. A little wet strike. Which gay bar has the cleanest restrooms? Christopher Street. Christopher Street! I don't believe that. They have very nice... Matter of fact, at Christopher Street, they have, those, they have those railings on the side of the stall. That's for when you really have to go, you know? Uh, okay. <laughs> Frank, what gay bar has the cleanest restrooms? Two strikes. Paradise. Paradise! 
Paradise. Okay, that's fourth best answer. Their bathrooms are very clean. You have to shovel snow occasionally, but other than that, it's... Okay. Which gay bar has the cleanest restrooms? Gold Coast. Oh, yeah. As opposed to the standard station at Clark in Ohio, it is a clean rest. The Gold Coast, is that a strike? Are you sure? Is this a strike or an answer or what? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. All right, there's a whole 22 points here at stake, but it'll get you on the board. Which gay bar has the cleanest restrooms? Little Jim's. Little Jim's! All right, you get the 22 points, Joe. While you're marking that, we're gonna check the other ones. Sophie, I'm surprised when we, we'd have gotten to you, she could have named us seven toilets right in a row. What is the number one answer? It's free and on, okay, disco bathroom. Number two answer. I thought I was gonna say. I thought I was gonna say Wendy's. <laughs> what? What? What is the third best answer? Piggins. Okay. Uh, number five. Company. Okay. Number seven. Gentry and the eighth best. The North End. I don't know. The places that I go to, the bathroom is out the back into a ga- our garbage can. Okay. 22 to nothing. Oh, Renee. Renee, Renee, Fred. Okay. Hi, okay. Don't, you don't have to slam it, you just sort of hit it. And a pretty hat it is too, I wouldn't wear it to a dog show, but on you, honey, it looks grand. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't have a hat. Hint, hint to you teams out there. Okay, question number 113, we asked, now this is at Little Jim's, Bucks, and Christopher Street. Thank you. At Little Jim's, Bucks, Christopher Street, the following question. Their top eight answers are on the board to this question. Name their most popular answer. Out of every 100 gay men, how many of them have a mustache? I think, Renee. 75. 75 out of 100. Best answer. All right, Renee, 25 points. Gonna play this? You're gonna play, okay. Why didn't we get a kiss? Sophie, oh. Sophie Lou, just back from Great America where she appeared as a ride. Uh, Um, I would go with 50. 50. 50? 50. I think it's up there. Yep, there it is. Okay, seven, 32 points. Dijon. How's your sister shrimp? Okay. Uh, how many, out of 100 gay men, how many of them have a mustache? 25. One fourth. Okay, strike number one. Sammy Lou. Out of 100 gay men, how many of them have a mustache? 90. How about 90? Okay, second best answer. 30, 55. Wayne, you guys have one strike, but there's still five answers to get. Out of 100 gay men, how many of them have a mustache? 80. How about 80? Okay, it's up there. Uh, 30, 55, 62. Four answers left, Renee. How many? 60. 60? Okay, strike number two. Thought that'd be up there. Sophie, nice shirt. Did you shoot a hammock? Okay. (laughs) 
so. <laughs> oh, this is an inner circle show. Well, that now that's well, nice. I'm sorry. Well, I just saw this red material. You know, I thought you went out and shot a nogger or something. You know. Okay. Real nice shirt. Okay, so out of 100 gay men, how many of them have a mustache? Um, 65. Okay, how about 65? Okay, that's your third strike. Let's see, there are 62 points, I think, up there. Yeah, 62. Got an answer, Joe? 95. 95. It's up there. All right, uh, 62 and 22 is 84. I would think that the answer is up there in mustache country up on Halstead Street would be real high. I mean, if they'd asked how many plaid shirts, it'd only been one answer, it'd be 100. Uh, what's number four? 70. Number five? <laughs> 98.6. And uh, number six? 99. They asked one fellow without a mustache, and he said 99 other people. Okay. All right, the score is... This is a real, a real slug fest here. 84, 84 for bushes. Nothing for the Lou family. Um, while we're changing questions, Sam told me about something that uh, some of you people who have been in the uh, gay bar scene for a while might remember. Especially, they're having a little affair. What next Sunday? Why, why don't you tell me about it? I'll be right back. Who's going to tell me? Okay. Oh, the. Uh, the last Sunday of this month, the 26th, we're having a Sunday's reunion party at Sam's where they're going to have all the old bartenders that used to work there. Well, not all of them, but former, thank you. Um, they're going to be taking shifts, doing different things. I don't know what exactly, but I wasn't one of them. So, <laughs> but, well, that's it. That's it? Well, for those of you who remember Sunday's, uh, it's when I first came into the city, Sunday's is my favorite bar and always held a special place in my heart. Uh, for those of you who remember the bar, some of the people who will be there, Sam was telling me, uh, Chucky Rodiker will be there, uh, AJ, Robin, uh, Sophie will be there, Karen Triner, oh you're not, Spike, Karen, Karen was Karen Ross, now Karen, Karen Triner, yeah I said Robin. So I promised to be a fun day, come on down. Uh, bring your drinking shoes if I remember all these people. Okay, here we got the standings and, uh, okay, Sophie and, I knew that, I was just testing you. I think so. Okay, let's see, the Lou family has, what, 363 is in fourth place and Bushes has 332 and I think is in fifth place. Okay, is that right? You have more? Oh wait, hold on, here they are. Okay, Bush's was, you're right, 2.30, and last week was 2.7, 5.03, excuse me, they are in second place. The Bushes are in second place with 503. So, the Gold Coast, who was leading, got a big score. You guys need a big score to keep up with them. Okay, we have question number 135. Let me make sure this is working. It's kind of getting beat up, like me. <laughs> yeah, the Johns are much too clean for me. Okay, question number 135. We asked 100 people at Paradise Island this following question. Their top answers, seven answers around the board. To this one, name their most popular answer to this question. What is your favorite flower? It worked. I just tried it. I know he hit it first. What do you want me to do? Judges, what should I do? His lit up, but I know he hit it first. What am I supposed to do? Huh? Me, me be the judge? Thanks a lot, David. You're such a swell guy. Okay. Anybody got a coin? Oh, you want a coin? That's the only thing I can think of to do. Trust me. I can't ask the same question. What do you got, the two-tailed coins? <laughs> well, yours lit up, so you get to call it at least. I'll call, I'll call heads, probably. <laughs> what, heads? It is heads, okay. Uh, I forgot the question. <laughs> <laughs> they have elected to receive. Okay, these teams will kick off over here, all right. 
All right. We asked them, what is your favorite flower? Rose. How about rose? <laughs> Romantic rose. 65 points. All right. There's 80 answers. You're going to play this? Okay. Dijan, what is your favorite flower? We asked this at Paradise. Carnation. How about carnations? I love their milk. Sammy, we asked them at Paradise, what is your favorite flower? Pansy. Pansy? <laughs> Pansy's a strike, I'm sorry. Okay. What do you think, Wayne? Orchid. How about orchids? You're kidding. I wore them to my prom right here on this wrist. <laughs> Renee, two strikes. Things are getting serious here. They're way ahead. Tulip. How about tulips? It's up there. Okay, 73 points. So, we need an answer. What is your favorite flower? Five seconds. Shut up. <laughs> You're paying me ass. I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see, 80, 73, you could take a big lead, Joe. What is your favorite flower? Daisy. How about daisies? <laughs> they got it. All right, you got 73. I don't know, I don't know the answers, but I'll bet Bird of Paradise is up there. How about number two answer? <laughs> How about number three? Every so often I get one right. Iris. Okay, how about number uh, five? Gladiolus. And number eight. Or seven, rather. Mums. The word. It's my favorite deodorant, too. Oh, Okay, 73. 73 for the lose. 84 over here for Bushes. Come on, Dijon. Okay, Dijon. Frank. That was, I, I had a good time. Oh, my nickel bag. Okay, if a uh, few people from the bars, uh, representing the bars and the teams have any special events coming up, please let me know, and uh, we'll talk about it in between times. What's up? We had one last night. Last night? Well, let's all tell, let's all tell them to show up last night. It was fun. Okay, hold on now. Let's see if this is working. I think it's working. I'm going to have to watch because I'm not going to flip coins again. Okay. Please don't have a tie. Question number 130. Uh, what's the score? 84 to 73, right? We asked 100 people at Carol's the following questions. Their top six answers are on the board to this one. Name their most popular answer. What was your favorite dance song of 1983? So many men. So many men. Number one answer. Okay, you, get the, you uh, get the choice now to play it or pass it. What do you think? You gonna play it? Okay. You gonna play this? Captain? Okay. All right, let's, I gotta be on the set in November, okay? Yeah, you're gonna play it? All right, fine. All right. Sam, name your favorite dance song. <laughs> um. Five seconds. It's raining men. Uh, it's raining men. Is that up there? Oh. It's raining men. I think that was that was the year before. But it was a good answer. <laughs> I said that was from last year, and Sophie says, "Well, we have an old jukebox." Uh, Wayne, you have one strike. Name your favorite dance song in 1983. Eartha Kitt. Uh, what, is it? What, what did she do? She did something. Can I take that answer? You're at the kid song? Okay. I think that one's from this year, incidentally. Two strikes, 24 points, Renee. Name your favorite dance song. You guys wanted to play this now, come on. Name your favorite dance song in 1983. <laughs> you got me. 
Five seconds? I don't know. You got me was not up there. Okay, that was the third strike. <laughs> Isn't this fun? <laughs> okay, you can get 24 more points, make it up to 108. What do you think? Uh, she works hard for the money. She works hard for the money. Donna Summer song. How about it? Yeah, that was up there. Okay, you get 24. You have 108. 73 for the Lou family. Let's see, what's second best answer? Flash dance. How about number three? Thriller. Number four? Billy Jean. Uh, is this Beat It? Number five? Oh, what a surprise. I'm not like the other boys. You're having your own family feud, right? <laughs> okay, the score is 108 to 73. Mark, Sam. Okay. Please, I would like to stand to last one more week, okay? Okay, we're gonna have six answers this time. Here comes a question. Thank you, David. Question number three. We asked 100 men at Touche the following question. Their top, top five answers is up on the board. Name a place on the body that might be pierced. I know he was first, I went on anyway. Ear. Your ear? Okay, third best answer, Sammy. Your tit. How about a tit ring? Number one answer. Okay. 69 points already, and there's three answers left. You gonna play this? Okay, Wayne, name a place on the body that might be pierced. Your dick. How about your appendage? That's it. Okay, let's see. 70, 80, 90 points. Two answers left. Renee? Name a place on your body that might be pierced. Is touche? They asked the touche. Oh, your navel. Your navel? If you have an Audi, I guess. Okay, that's a strike. Your navel? I haven't seen mine since I was 12. Self? What do you, name a, all you got, I have to ask the question, Mary. That's my job. Name a place on the body that might be pierced. Next, ball. Uh, t I think the proper term is testicles. Oh. Hmm. We're running out of places that I can think of anyway. <laughs> what do you say? Name a place on your body that might be pierced. Nose. Oh, nose. How about nose? That's up there. Okay. Sam, there's one answer and two strikes. If you can get it, you can get uh, back in the lead. Name a part of the body that might be pierced. <laughs> Five seconds. Um, your cheek. All right, how about your cheek? I think the judges are deciding on this one. Hello? I have nothing to do with it. The judge has answered that one. Okay. Do they really do that? On their, on their, on their butt? I mean, God knows I got enough extra, but I mean, I never heard of that. Okay, 173 over here, 108 over here. <laughs> okay. Okay. Come on, Bushes, you gotta get back here. You can win this game still. They can win also. They only need to win the question. You just about have to get all the right answers this time. Okay, got the captains up here. Take time for a cocktail. Cheek. It's not me, those judges, that's their decision. The judges' decisions are final in case of a tie. 
all questions are thrown out. Or something. Speaking of questions, how about one more, David? All right, this one's going to, could decide it. Not necessarily is going to, but it could. The way this game is going, we may take seven more questions, okay? <laughs> Question number 118. Okay, we asked 100 people at the Gold Coast the following question. Their top seven answers are on the board. Name the most popular answer. What? Name a Chicago Leather Levi Club. Uh, I knew this would happen. Oh, it went on. Okay, great, because it was a dead tie. Name a Leather Levi Club. Um, There's at least seven of them. They got seven answers. Five seconds. <laughs> Wayne? Chaps. Chaps! That's a buzzer, too. Uh, all right, you guys had the question, so I go next to Fred. Fred, name a Leather Levi Club in Chicago here. Um, club or a club? Leather Levi Club, five seconds. Two shades, I don't know. I don't think two shades is correct. How about it? Okay. Renee, Leather Levi Club. Could name a shade of lipstick and she'd know. <laughs> Chicago Knights. How about Chicago Knights? Oh, yeah. Good answer, honey. It's up there. Okay, that's, uh, they already missed theirs, so you get the question. You want to play it? You're going to pass it? Okay. All right, they give you a chance here. I don't know. <sighs> Name a Chicago Leather Levi Club. Um, Cossacks. The Cossacks? Yeah. You're kidding. I didn't think there were seven clubs. My right, goodness. Okay, I thought that was the right answer. Frank, what do you think? Name a Leather Levi Club. Hellfire. Hellfire? That sounds good to me. Hellfire. Okay, it's up there. 19 points. Five answers left. Mark, Chicago Leather Levi Club. I didn't know it was that funny. Manhandlers. Manhandlers. Okay, two strikes. And uh, here you go. Joe, what do you think? Name a Leather Levi Club. Fist. F-I-S-T, Friends in Search of Thrills. Okay, now what happened here, there's enough points, you gotta get the question, because there's enough points for them to win. They have 28-35. This, this is the man that gave me two shades a few minutes ago, so there's not much hope on this. Fred, got five seconds. Name of Chicago, let the Levi Club. I don't know. Um. I already gave him five seconds. Nah, I don't know. Thank you. <clears throat> the judge is doing downers back there. That was five seconds to him. Okay. Come on. Got an answer? You can win the game. Second City. Second City. How about it? Second City up there? They win the game. All right. Uh, 35 and 173. 178, 208. You still got 108 to add to your point total. You guys are still, I think, in second place. Okay, Bushes, thank you. Congratulations to the Lou family. Oh, hold on, just a minute. What's the first best answer? Gold Cup. But that's not a club, right? All right, what's the second best answer? Pride, all right, and the last one? Rodeo Riders. Okay, I, there's more clubs than I thought of. I've heard of all of them. Okay, we'll be back for game number four. I have to take a drink and I'll walk to the facilities again. We'll be right back. Get your tickets out. There's going to be a drawing again. And here's David Boyer. Thank you very much. Um... This little ta-da was brought to you by Touche, something you don't expect. This is Brian from Club Victoria. We thank you for helping us out. But uh, we'd like, we did this just to make you realize tomorrow is full moon at Touche, and, and our theme for our full moon this month is tits and ass. Uh, we didn't necessarily mean um, foam rubber tips or uh, anything, tits or anything like that. We'd like to see the tits generally hairy, nice and uh, hot. 
So, <laughs> right. You got excited, right, Gary? I thought you would. Anyhow, uh, in case you want to come by tomorrow night for our full moon party, we will be judging at midnight. We're going to give away $25 to the man with the best tits, $25 to the man with the best ass, and the man that has the combination of the hottest tits and the hottest ad, he's going to get them 50 bucks. And they'll be judging at midnight tomorrow night. So come on by tomorrow night for our full moon party at Touche. At this time, I'd like to give away a $10 bar tab. If you've got a ticket that ends in the numbers 156, 156, I got a $10 bar tab at Touche. No winner on 156. We'll try one more time then. Okay, if you have 192, ticket number 192, read the ticket the last three digits. You still didn't get it. Did you? Oh, Teddy, you got it. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay. And playing for the Good Shepherd Parish MCC Church, the team from Touche. Touche's. Okay, I'm going to read out. There's the standings as of this week, last week, Touche, and this week. Touche has 332, and I believe they're in about fifth, no, fourth or fifth. I had a list of, of all of them in order, but I'm not sure. I think about f f fifth. They're right behind the Lou family. Opal Station has a score of 100 points, and they are the strongest team because they're holding everybody else up. <laughs> All right, Opal Station, we got to do something about that this week. Captain, you want to introduce our team here? Okay. This, Yourself, too. This is the Dominatrix. I'm Michelle. This is the Dominatrix, Lori Noel. Yay! This is the sex slave, Jim, known as Bear. Yay! That's Easy Phil. And that's Easy Michael. We're all easy. They're all easy. My kind of gang. Okay, Captain Spike. I want to introduce this team over here. Okay, this is our resident stewardess, uh, Eddie. Eddie, we got our pilot, Chuck Rodiker, one of the best men. And our flighty attendant, Willie, checks out every coat. And our upstairs steward, David. Who we'll makes sure that if you don't come, you have a safe arrival? Okay. Okay. Captains, come on up, let's play. Try it. Okay, I think it's working. Okay. Don't, please, if, you don't have to think of it. Uh oh. It was not on her cheek. Okay. <laughs> David, have a question here, please. Wait, wait, right, here. right here. Okay. okay, David. All right, this is question number 106. We asked 100 people at Augie and CK's. Remember where this was asked. At Augie and CK's, the following question, their top five answers are on the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. Who is your favorite first lady? I think she did. What do you think? We'll have this fixed next week, don't worry. All right, name your favorite first lady, Michelle. Betty Ford, the alcoholic. All right, my kind of girl, an alcoholic, Betty Ford. Okay, uh, Spike, you can still get it if you can give me a better answer. What favorite first lady? Ask it, CK's. Nancy Reagan. Nancy Reagan! Oh, Nancy didn't even make Nancy Reagan, where are you? No. You're kidding. No. Oh, no, it wasn't the first answer. Okay, uh, it, they have the choice. You got the All right. 
Could you pull that back a little farther? I can see how many points are there. Thank you. Okay, 25 points. We'll fly. We'll fly. Lori. <laughs> name who we asked the girls at Augie and CKs to name their favorite first lady. Eleanor Roosevelt. Yay! Eleanor Roosevelt. Okay, 25 and uh, 48. <laughs> Uncle Jim. Name your favorite first lady. Rosalind Carter. Oh. Ros Carter. Oh. She was kind of a camp. I liked her. She used to always talk about her husband, Billy, or her husband, Jimmy. It's bigger than a peanut. Okay. Philip? I got it right. You proud of me? Took me only three weeks. Philip, name your favorite first lady. Bess Truman. How about Bess Truman? Okay, I'm surprised. I thought that'd be up there. Mike? We asked that Augie and CK is your favorite first lady. Jackie Kennedy. Yeah. First answer. I don't understand how that poor woman can just barely get by on a $5 million a year. Okay, let's see. What do we got up here? Uh, 15, 25, 48, 88 points. Michelle, there's one answer. You can get it all. Lady Bird. A bush, a tree, a shrub. Lady Bird Johnson, all right. Okay. What a collection of winners that was. All right. Opal Station, you have matched your two-week total in one question. Congratulations. Okay. Eddie, come on up here. Lori. Yes, I do, right here. Okay, you have 100? All right, let's try it again. Hold on, let me see. Yeah, see now, it is working. Okay, I will watch, I'll try and, if it's not a tie, I'll have to, I'll, I'll call it because it's not working too well. All right, we have another question coming up. Chucky, when's your next full moon party? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, and the fetish is? Tits, oh, that's, I was, I was detained. I, I have to go to the bathroom during commercial times, I'm sorry. Tits and you have to tell me about that. I want to hear her. Good answer. Okay, question number 144. We asked 100 people at the Good Shepherd Parish MCC Church the following question. Their top six answers are on the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. Except for work, how much time do you spend on the phone per day? Lori was first. Did it go on? Damn it. She was first, though. Two hours. Two hours on the phone? It's up there. Okay, Eddie. Uh, give a better answer. Except for work. Four. For what? Four hours. Four hours on the phone every day? When, when do you sleep and eat? Okay, you gonna play it? You gonna take it? All right, you could win if you get all the answers. Jim, except for work, how much time do you spend on the phone per day? A half hour. Half an hour? Top answer. Okay, 37 points over here. Philip. 45 minutes. Three quarters of an hour. First strike. All right, they have one strike. Okay, Michael, what do you say? How many hours a day do you spend on the phone? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. F 15, right? One, five. 15 minutes? It's up there. Okay. 41, 50 points. Three answers left. Let's see. Okay. Michelle, you have, you have one strike. Uh, one hour? One hour. 25 points, 53, 66, 75, and two answers left. Lori, what do you say? An hour and a half. 90 minutes, an hour and a half. Okay. Jim, if you get this one, I think you win the game. You win it in two questions. Name, uh, except for work, how much time do you spend on the phone per day? 10 minutes. How about 10 minutes? I don't believe it. 15, 42. This was the fastest game we've had yet. They were out for blood tonight. Okay. Touches, you still guys have a good score. We'll come back next week. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Opal Station, your first win. Yes, 200 to nothing. All right. That was the fastest game we had yet. Two questions right off the bat. Okay. All right.
Oh, we have time for another commercial if David is ready. We're going to have another drawing, and then I have our last game of the evening. Uh, the leading team, uh, no, second team. Paradise is second, and they're playing, uh, I don't remember who now. Who's left? Yes. Oh, excuse me. I have something to read before we do the commercials. Hold on. Okay. This is a commercial also. Uh, this is for Strike Against AIDS. There's a table over here with some AIDS information as well as sign-up sheets for Strike Against AIDS if you'd like to join it. It's a benefit for the AIDS Action product, Project at Howard Brown Clinic. The date is March 10th at 2, 8, 2 p.m. at Marigold Arcade at Grayson Broadway. All of the bars, including Carol's, I will be bowling, uh, and I am looking for some people who'd like to uh, uh, sponsor me in the, in the uh, strikes against AIDS. We're looking for pledges. Please sponsor these bowlers. With one, new AIDS, with one new cases of AIDS in Chicago in January alone, you can see that the crisis is not over yet, and the money is greatly needed still. Let's not give up. Howard Brown has brochures, as I say, over here. Essentially what it is, is a bunch of people that you know from the community, bartenders, bar owners, managers, and people from the community are going to bowl a game, and their sponsors will pledge to pay any amount over 10 cents, I believe, is, is the, the, the least. Any amount, 10 cents per pin or up. Any amount. You want to pledge a dollar a pin, it's great. You want to pledge five dollars a pin, it'd be wonderful. But that amount you pledge to pay, depending on what score the bowler bowls. Now, you can pick people, ask, uh, for example, I am bowling. Uh, if, if you want to sponsor me, you go over and sign up a sheet over there with the amount and your name and address and everything. Any other questions? This is sponsored by Gay Life, Gay Chicago, and Marigold Arcade, correct? And Howard, and in conjunction with Howard Brown Clinic. Okay, David, you got a commercial and a drawing? Okay, and then come on back, we'll be, have one more game. Okay, this is basically two repeat commercials, so they'll be real quick. Our first one is from Imperial Towers European Tan Spa. Again, they're located at 4250 Marine Drive. And we have a door prize here of a free tanning session. And they do have a special going on right now, discount offer. And there are cards up in front that can give you more information about it if you'd like to stop by. You want to get a head start on your summer tan, check your tickets. The last three numbers, 260, 260 for a free tanning session. I'm uh, sorry, three, free tanning session at the uh, Imperial Towers European Tan Spa. It's number 260. We got a winner? Okay, and Dijon, where'd you go now? We have another uh, little commercial break here from Take One. Hi. Um, <laughs> Sunday afternoons, we have a bagel bash presented by the Brooklyn Bagel Boys on Broadway and Michael Glenner, the owner of Take One. You're all invited down for that. We're open at 2 o'clock, and uh, that ends at 7.30. We party hardy every Friday and Saturday night. We are a video bar. We're open seven days a week. Our VJ is um, Jimmy Brider from the old paradise. Uh, I'm also there seven days a week. Um, just come on down and we'll party and we have another bar tab for you. Okay, we have another $10 bar tab at Take One. If you've got ticket number 246, 246 for a $10 bar tab at Take One. What'd you forget? Also, um, Take One is going to be the home of the Sisters of Divine Decadence. If there's any bar people out there, any bartenders or uh, bar employees that are interested in being a male nun for this summer. We're going to be raising money for AIDS and for Toys for Tots. You can either see myself at Take One or um, Renee at the Inner Circle. Okay, once again, we're looking for ticket number 246 for a $10 bar tab at Take One. Oh, maybe he's in back with Molly, I don't know. Okay, uh, we'll try ticket number 257. 257? Oh! Uh-oh, uh-oh.
Oh, I'll give it to her. <laughs> Nobody claims 257. Oh, yes, I did read that wrong. This is number 157 that I'm holding, okay? Okay, that's Carol Ann from the clinic. If you have, uh, want to know anything about the AIDS project and they're studying all that, she's right in the middle of it. She can tell you about it as well. Again, we have some information from Howard Brown Clinic and Dignity Chicago back over here in this corner. Thank you, Jerry. Okay. The team from Paradise is playing for the Gay Athletic Association, better known as GAA. And with a score of, let's see what they had, 147, 247, which puts them in eighth place. Company, you got to catch up. The team from Company, come on up here. <laughs> okay. Let's go over here to... Uh, Captain Tyrone this week. Ty? Hello, Molly. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. We have a little belated Valentine's to give you a little box of candy. Oh, my favorite, fattening. Good. Lovely. I got my heart on. And of course, our favorite little hat for you. Hey, Richard Dawson, is this a horse's ass? Or? Look at this. What do you think, folks? Is it me or what, huh? Thank you. Tyrone, you want to introduce your team? Shall do. I have Mark, our bartender from the private club. Pearl, our favorite fish from Paradise. Larry, one of our favorite customers. And Brian, one of our favorite younger customers. All right. Thank you. This is the team from Paradise. Glendora, Captain Glenn. Name, you want to introduce your team? Uh, to my left here, I have, on my right, I don't know. <laughs> this is the hand you hold a peanut butter sandwich, and this is the root beer, okay? To your right. I have, as everyone knows, Gay Gourmet, my older sister, Rick. And then I have my father, Gordon. Mother wearing her smart smock tonight, Ronnie, the Polish princess. And my <laughs> divine sister, uh, Greg. All right, team from company. And uh, we have a special announcement to make before we get started. Tonight is a special night for uh, Ronnie and Gordon. It's their fifth anniversary tonight, to the day. <laughs> Happy anniversary, many more. You introduced us. That's right, I introduced them. Uh, I was working at Nutbush, and Ronnie was doing, at the old Iron Butterfly, the first pie, was that the first pie toss? First, first celebrity pie toss for the Roadie Fun. And uh, Gordy was a friend of mine and a customer from Nutbush, and I told him, I said, meet me down there. And they met, and the rest is history. That was five years ago. Many more. Happy anniversary. Okay, Captain Tyrone, Glenn, come on up. Let's start the game. Oh, boy. Let me get that chocolate. Oh, man. Okay, question 123. Mind you, please, if you can avoid it, do not call out the answers, okay? And scream and hoot all you want. That's what we want you to do. Have fun, but don't call the answers out. That's not fair. We asked 100 people at Club Victoria the following question. Their top six answers are on the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. Name something a gay person would serve for brunch. I think Glenn was first. Yeah, his light went on. Glenn? Quiche. No, I, I talk in here. Quiche. How about a quiche? All right, it's up there, but it's not the best one. Can you think of something better? Bloody Marys. How about Bloody Marys? Number one answer. All right, cocktails, Bloody Marys. 55 points already. Four answers. You going to play at Paradise? All right. They always told me it was not good to hug the girls, but you could quiche Lorraine. Okay, Mark. Name something a gay person would serve for brunch. Eggs Benedict. My favorite, Eggs Benedict. It's up there. Okay, 55, 65 points. I have a very obscene story concerning Eggs Benedict and a bathtub, which I can't tell at the moment. Come up and see me later. Pearly May. Hi, baby. Name something a gay person would serve for brunch. Bagels. Bagels! I would have bagels. 
Uncle Air. Give her a strike. Give her a strike on him. Yeah, give we're going to give her a strike. Okay. Oh, shoot. It's so loaded up there. Really? Here you go, honey. Lair, what do you say? Steak. Steak? Is it up there? I'm surprised. I, I like steak and eggs. All right, second strike. They're getting a little wet. Brian? Name something a gay person would serve for brunch. Champagne. Champagne? I think that counts under cocktails. Yeah. No, they, they don't. If, uh, I have to take what to do. Fine, Indian givers. Okay. Okay, Paradise has three strikes. Company can steal this question. Let's see, there's uh, 65 points. Glenn, you got an answer? Something a gay person would serve for brunch? Uh, we say crepes. How about crepes? Okay, what's the third answer? That's uh, 65. Just eggs. Okay, that's a good answer. How about number five? Salad. Hey. And six? <laughs> of course they are referring to head cheese. Uh, yes, okay, all right. Uh, here's the magic marker. You can put it on top, it's okay. Right here. Okay, 65 Paradise Company. Come on, you have nothing right yet. Rick, come on up. Mark. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Their present was a, a little pamphlet on Venereal Awards patient information sheet. I will keep this and uh, use it appropriately. Thank you very much. Okay. We got a question coming up. Time out. I love these little spots in between. Richard Dawson, eat your heart out. Okay, this is question 137, score is 65 to nothing. Forget, we'll be back here next week. Last week uh, at eight o'clock, Dynasty will be shown. So please plan to be with us early and stay late. We'll be here late. We're gonna get the chairs out of here as quickly as we can. And we're gonna have some music by Chicago's best disc jockey, Mr. Mark Haltmark. So stick around, okay? Okay, we asked 100 people at Paradise Island the following question. There's top six answers around the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. Shh. Name a Chicago gay bar that has a jukebox. Uh, I, I thought he was first. Gla uh, Rick. Piggins. How about Piggins? It's up there. Mark, there's three better answers. Can you think of one? Chicago gay bar that has a jukebox. Um, new Flight. The Flight! Company, you have the choice. You gonna play this one? Play. Okay, there's 10 points up there and five answers. Gordy? Name a Chicago juke gay bar that has a jukebox. Little Jims. How about Little Jims? <laughs> Little Jims. Okay, it's 2131. Ron? She knew me when I was young. It's one of my dear sisters. Ron, name a Chicago gay bar that has a jukebox. Um, the Inner Circle. The Inner Circle! Strike number one. Okay. Greg, name a Chicago gay bar that has a jukebox. Ronnie and Gordy's company. I was wondering if somebody was going to say that. How about company? You're kidding. I love the jukebox at company. Glenn, name a Chicago gay bar that has a jukebox. Shh, please. Come on now. Closet. The closet? Yeah, it's up there. Okay, 34, 44 points. Rick, can you give me another one? Big Reds. How about Big Reds? It's up there. I like their jukebox, too. Uh, 54 points and two left. There's still the number one answer up there, Gordy. Five seconds. Dandies. How about dandies? Yep, it's up there. Okay, all that's left is the number one answer. If you get it, you get 100 points. And if you don't get it, they get a chance to steal it. Ronnie, name a Chicago gay bar that has a jukebox.
Five seconds. The night out. I think the night out is closed. It's, it's still open? They told me it was closed. All right, that's your third uh, strike company. Paradise, there's uh, 51 points up there. You can get it if you get the right answer. What do you say, Ty? BJ's. How about BJ's? That's it. Okay, there is uh, 21, 34, 44, 54, 61 points up there. What did I say, 61? Uh, 126 is right. Nothing over here. Right, 126 for Paradise, nothing for company. Come on, guys. Gordy, come on up here. Let's go. All right, I'm going to have to watch, okay? We'll have it fixed by next week. <laughs> okay, we have Pearl and Gordy up here, and another question coming up. We're going to have, oh, seven answers this time. <laughs> okay, thank you, David. Ah, uh, it's not working. This is question number 114, okay? We asked 100 people at Little Jim's, Bucks, and Christopher Street the following question. Their top seven answers are on the board. Name their most popular answer to this question. What is your favorite TV show? Dynasty. Uh, wait, I think he was first. Okay, Dynasty. 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 Yeah. Number one answer. Okay, you got the choice now. Okay, they're gonna play it. Okay, Ron, we asked at Little Jim's Bucks and Christopher Street your favorite TV show. Falcon Crest. How about Falcon Crest? Yes, oh, that's a strike. Okay, Greg, your favorite TV show. All My Children. AMC, All My Children. That's gotta be up there. Okay, 52 points. And uh, five answers left, Glenn. What is your favorite TV show? Dallas. How about Dallas? I thought that'd be up there too. Okay, let's see, there's uh, 52 points. It's not enough for them to win, but you guys gotta get on the scoreboard now. Name your favorite TV show. Hotel. Hotel? Oh, isn't that third strike? All right, uh, Paradise, you can take a big lead, but you won't have enough to win the game. Got an answer for me? Five seconds, come on. Tyrone? Hill Street Blues. My favorite, Hill Street Blues. Yeah, it's up there, okay. 52 and 126 is 178. How, what's the second best answer? Magnum. All right, what's the, how about number three? Yay, cheers. Uh, number seven, uh, six, sixth answer. Yay, I love Lucy! <laughs> and number seven, seven best answer. Doctor Who. Yeah, that's a good show. Okay, Uncle Lair, come on up here. Ronnie, we'll try it, but I'm gonna have to watch. Put your hand down here. Great show. What's that? Yeah, I, I have to. You know, until next week, we got to fix next week. Okay, come on, company. You got to get in the game here. They can win it real easily on this one. They don't need many points at all to win. The last shall be first. We're making a fast finish here. Okay, Ron, this is question number 127, Larry. We asked 100 people at Dignity the following question. Their top six answers are on the board to this question named their most popular answer. Who is your favorite Chicago TV news anchor person? Larry was first. Walter Jacobson. Uncle Wally. Walter Jacobson, our second best answer. Can you give me a better one? Uh, Connie Chung. Connie Chung, I don't think she's in Chicago. Connie Chung. She swings American style though. Uh, Paradise, what do you say, you gonna play it? No, no, no. You're gonna pass it. 
All right, they gave you a chance here. If you guys get all four answers, you can win it. But uh, there's five answers, excuse me. Greg, your favorite Chicago TV news anchor person? Walter Cronkite. How about Uncle Walter Cronkite? That's number one. These are, remember, these are local answers, local people. Okay, Glenn, what do you think? Favorite Chicago TV news anchor person? Uh, Joel Daly. Joel Daly. My goodness. Rick, things are getting tense now. They could get it with one good answer because they have enough to win. What is your favorite Chicago TV news anchor person? She's got to be number one, Linda Yu. Linda Yu. Number one answer. Okay. Gordy, the same situation. You've got to get another right answer or they get a chance to win it. Chicago fav favorite Chicago TV news anchor person? Uh, Five seconds. Ron Majors. How about Ron Majors? Isn't he an anchor person? I, uh, I don't get to see the news because I'm never home at 10 o'clock, but I thought he was. Okay, Paradise, you got a chance to win it. All you need is these uh, 62 points. Got an answer for me, Tyrone? Marianne Childers. Marianne Childers, is she up there? Okay, you're still in the game. Company, you're still in the game. All right, here's your, uh, you have, let's see, seven, 72 points. What's number third answer? Floyd Calver. He just came back. Uh, fifth best, or fourth answer, rather. Don Craig? I, I don't know these people, I really don't. Uh, number five, Carol Marine. I know I've heard her name. And number six, who's that? John Drury. Okay. All right, let's see. 178 to 72 is right. Greg and Brian? Okay. A lot at stake here. Okay, Paradise, you can win on this question. Digni or, uh, dignity. Company. You're, you're going to play. You have to keep in the game. You have to win this question to keep in the game. And here comes Uncle David with a question for me. Thank you. Question number 128. Okay, we asked 100 people from Dignity the following question. Their top five answers are on the board. Name the most popular answer. Besides Chicago, name your other favorite party city. Yeah. Uh, that was awful close. I can't do another question. I, the only thing I can do is flip a coin. It looked, it. I, I don't know. I thought it, I, to, personally, I thought it was a tie. I thought it was close enough to be a tie. Well, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna do another question. I'll flip a coin. Okay. All right. So get, oh, here. Here's my lucky nickel over here. Um, wait a minute. Excuse me. Okay, you get the answer first. Besides Chicago, Brian, name your favorite party city. New York. How about New York City? The Big Apple. Wasn't the best answer. I'm surprised. Greg, what do you think? Florida. Oh, no, no, no. I gotta take. I, I gotta take the first answer. That's why I've done all this all the time we've been here. Florida is not correct. You gonna play it? Oh. Besides Chicago, Tyrone, name your other favorite party city. San Francisco. San Francisco. Number one answer. Okay, 60, 70 points and three answers. Mark, besides Chicago, your favorite party city. Fort Lauderdale. Fort Lauderdale in Fluffla. Oh, I'm surprised. One of my personal faves. Okay, Mark. Pearly May, besides Chicago, your other favorite party city. Atlanta. Atlanta. These people from Dignity, they probably said Yakima, Washington or something. 
Larry, your favorite party city other than Chicago? LA. Los Angeles. Okay. Let's see, 79 points. There's plenty of enough points to win. Brian, name your other favorite party city besides Chicago. I don't know if it's a city. It is. Key West. Key West? How about Key West? Third strike. Okay, you're still in the game, company. Okay, got an answer? Come on, you got to get this one or else uh, they win. Got an answer? Well, this one was four to one. They want this one. They want New Orleans. Sounds good to me. I don't know. New Orleans? You're kidding. I'm surprised. Paradise uh, is the winner. What is what is their final? 79 and 178. 240, 257. So you still have 72 points a company. What's the third best answer? Milwaukee. Milwaukee. I told you. Okay. <laughs> and fifth. Saga talk. You have to remember who you're asking these questions of, you know? Okay, company, we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Paradise, congratulations. Finals 257.72. If I could have a few Tavern Guild people, my bar boy out there to clean out, clear out the chairs. Stick around, we're going to have a drink and a party. And uh, we'll stay as long as you'd like to. Thank you all. Mark, some music, please.